I'm Diana McLean, and I'm one of the two teachers um, in the first year of our founding program of the Annapolis Valley First Nations School. We um, have a school program that's open to uh, children from age four right through to the end of grade 12, and we also offer a program for um, adult learners. Well, the program was developed um, at the uh, request of, of our chief and council, and they felt that there were a significant number of children and youth in our community that were falling through the cracks and were not being served in the public school system because of um, challenges in mental health or um, difficulties in um, just functioning in a regular school system. And so they wanted to provide an alternative on reserve school that would meet the needs of the children and youth in our community. We, uh, we offer a complete full school program. We're a certified school uh, that can offer the curriculum from grades primary to grade 12. And we offer a Nova Scotia grade 12 graduation diploma. And we can offer any courses from um, you know, economics, chemistry. Um, we, we offer the beginning primary level program. So we have teachers that are qualified to offer programs at all levels of the school system. Uh, we also have a strong Indigenous focus so that our, our reading material, um, the social studies curriculum, we, we are mandated to follow the outcomes of the Nova Scotia Provincial Curriculum, but we um, vary very widely from those outcomes in that we really want to be something different. We don't want to just offer our kids more of the same. We really try to look at Indigenous learning styles and offer a curriculum that will, you know, make our kids proud of their heritage. We also do have um, a Mi'kmaq language program, which is really challenging because there's only uh, one fluent Mi'kmaq speaker in our, our community. But we use resources from the University of Cape Breton and from the Mi'kmaq Gina Matanaway Education Authority to, to uh, help with uh, some of our Mi'kmaq language, but we're all learning together. The students and the teachers, we are all learning Mi'kmaq language as we go along. Well, we have graduated our first grade 12 student just last month. This year, we're a very small school and we are in a very small reserve and we have three grade 12 students this year. One has just graduated. We know we will have two more that will graduate in June. And these are youth who um, dropped out of school, who haven't been able to function. Um, who have struggled with issues in mental health or in um, learning dis with learning disabilities or attentional or behavior problems and just non-functional in the public system and they are going to graduate. All three of them have um, post-secondary aspirations and so I suspect that we've got three youth just uh, graduating from our school who would not have had opportunities otherwise. The same goes with our middle schoolers. We have three middle schoolers, all of whom struggled in the public school system and they would not have been able to have been successful unless they had the opportunity of coming to work with us. I think the thing that will make the program even better is to have um, more funding that will enable us to um, offer the program to m more kids with increasingly m more challenges. We do have youth in our community who have been in trouble with the law and we need um, really intensive programming to offer them the support that they need. So I think that if we were able to have maybe even a teacher's aide that we could um, bring on who would support us. We also need um, far more access to technology, but that's coming because we've become uh, a part of a project called Digital Mi'kmaq. And so we will, as of next week, have a new technology lab with one of our grade 12 students who will be coordinating that lab and we'll be able to offer um, mini courses in things like robotics, um, animation, um, digital technology, artificial intelligence, so and, and um, a lot of uh, things that will, I hope, grab the attention of our kids who, who need much more experience with digital technology. So we're excited about that. Yeah, we offer yoga every, every morning. Um, we have yoga integrated as part of our school program. All of our grade 12 students have a provincial grade 11 credit 
in yoga. And we brought that into the school because there were so many of our students who um, needed support with relaxation, um, concentration, um, suffered from so much stress and anxiety that we thought yoga would be a really good curriculum way to um, tackle those issues as well as, as give them a credit. But they look forward to it. It's wonderful. I, we just have a, a terrific time from about 11.30 to 12. Every day yoga is part of the curriculum. So we not only do the um, poses, but they do relaxation, breathing, meditation, and a little bit of the philosophy of yoga. And we have a program that is very much based on the seven sacred teachings. It is a yoga program with an indigenous focus. And we try and talk about things like truth and respect. And we have um, poses that represent those seven sacred teachings. We have poses for every animal in the seven sacred teachings. And then all of our school participates together. So our middle schoolers and our high school schoolers alike. So we have middle school children who are doing a grade 11 um, yoga curriculum alongside the grade 12 students. So it's really wonderful. Our, our students really tend to support each other. Mm -hmm. So... The little ones get along with the older ones, and I think it's a leadership opportunity for everybody. We have an obligation to offer the Nova Scotia's curriculum, but I would say that we offer far more, and we offer it in a, in a very different way, because the reason we started this school is, is so that we would be different. We do not want to be the same as the public school. We want to be different. We want to have um, a form of education for our youth that is better, that is different, that um, supports their cultural heritage, their spiritual teachings. And uh, so I would say they'll get everything they would get in the public school and more. Plus, um, we have teachers who are trained in um, special education and in assessment so that the um, curriculum is, is directly directly trained on focusing on student special and unique learning challenges. So we teach children the way they need to learn. Oh, that's a really challenging question, but I think um, it is a question, I mean, I think that it is a, a form of education that is different than what is offered in the public school. I think that um, it involves supporting the heritage of our youth, supporting their cultural backgrounds, supporting the ways they learn, and accepting that all, all Indigenous youth don't learn the way many students are expected to perform in, in, a, in the regular high school. We do a lot of oral instruction, we do a lot of oral assessment, and we, we use um, a very arts-based, um, an arts-based instructional format, so we have a lot of traditional crafts. We also um, let kids um, express themselves through a, a lot of arts mediums, um, singing, storytelling, drumming, dancing, a lot of things that would be part of a more indigenous traditional heritage. We do support um, outdoor education and land-based learning, and that's an area that we really feel like we want to have a lot more involvement in in the future. Well, I would say um, the number one hurdle we, we need to um, eliminate would be community members feeling that our school isolates children as opposed to enriches their experience of education. And uh, what I hope to show community members is that we have a very, the kids that come to our school have a very rich opportunity to learn and um, they have a lot of other opportunity for socializing in the community and that, that we are an enriching activity as opposed to an isolating activity. So I would like to see our numbers increase over the next few years. However, that being said, when we are able to offer a very intensive supportive curriculum to kids with special needs or unique learning challenges in groups of maybe six at a time, we are able to offer a very rich experience. So, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Over the next 10 years, over the next 10 years, I know our Chief and Council has the goal of building a school, having a physical building, and looking at probably having four classrooms with a science lab, a uh, technology lab, and um, supportive services for kids with special needs. So the vision is there that the school will definitely um, increase in size. And uh, my goal is to keep the curriculum and the, the quality 
as high as it is now even as we expand. Well, I feel I have a responsibility to be um, a knowledge bearer for our children and our youth. Um, it's a challenging thing. We, we use so much of traditional heritage and so many materials, but we also um, call upon the wisdom of the elders in our community, which is really important. We also use as many um, sources and resources as possible that are provided to us through Mi'kmaq Gina Matanue, through the University of Cape Breton. And because we are so isolated and depend so much on the support of, of outsiders, to, especially with Mi'kmaq language development, uh, we make as much use of those things as we can. Our school is... Um, is a school whose mission is, is rooted in the seven sacred teachings. So that just is a part of what we do all the time. And um, we try and bring it into every subject, every day, and it just becomes a part of who we are and how we live. It doesn't, it's not an add-on, it is who we are. So I think, and, and we also really try and support the um, oral tradition and do a lot of work in, um, in, in listening and in um, speaking and trying to instill in our youth that, that feeling that they are leaders, that they have so much to contribute to their community. We also have a mission to be of service to our community. That's, a, that's another, we're, we are founded on the seven sacred teachings, but we also are a school that has a mission of serving others and serving the community. So we're always looking for opportunities for service, we're always trying to encourage our young people um, to be of service to other people. Well, uh, I think probably the thing that is, has inspired me most over the past year is seeing um, several of our youth who suffered from severe mental health challenges, who perhaps uh, this time a year ago were not even able to uh, leave their home, let alone attend public school full time, coming to our school and being able to um, complete a full grade 12 curriculum and look forward to graduating and look forward to having a job. I've seen some of them truly become leaders who a few years ago were, were struggling to get out of bed. So I think that's probably the most exciting thing for me, seeing that given um, respect, responsibility, and being able to attend a school where they're truly valued and they have a unique individualized education. They just grow and blossom and become such successful human beings. Plus, it's just an absolute joy coming to school every day. I love what I do. Not only, not only are we a P-12 school, that's a really good question, because we are also um, a school that supports adult learners. And uh, they can get in touch with us through the Annapolis Valley First Nations band office, and they'll they'll send word down to me. And um, interestingly enough, um, we are open to um, all members of the community, not just um, members of the Annapolis Valley First Nations Band, not even indigenous people. Any people from the area who wish to upgrade um, their educational skills, do WIMIS training, um, learn how to write resumes, they're all welcome to come. And we're open and available from about 12.30 to 3 o'clock every afternoon for adult learners who work alongside our, our grade 12 students to um, you know, build all kinds of new skills. We even have um, one student who is uh, attending Acadia University and uh, work side by side with uh, other students in our learning center. So we offer a full range of opportunities. We do partner with the um, Nova Scotia Department of Education and the Adult Education and Labor Department, and they, they also support and sponsor students who, who are part of our school team.